what happens when someone drives people to respect him the indirect way even without their choice, and then what does the people do when the leader soon becomes their worst? Nightmare, stay tuned as I take you through the journey of Ogondeji a ferocious warrior and Gotija a commoner. Quick disclaimer, credit to Femi. Adebeo, watch out and don't forget to like and subscribe. The story begins with the introduction of Ogondeji as a fearless warrior, someone who is a legend throughout the various kingdom, the movie dives into a town of Quito where they are currently in chaos. Because they have been invaded by a man who wants to take the throne, the chief. Invader asks for the ancestral crown of the kingdom but the king knows more than. Trying to play a game with him and it turns out that the invader doesn't have time for game so they kill the first son of the king and then he has no option to disclose where the crown is, upon getting the crown the invader still means to kill everyone but a blade slashes his hand and we do not know where it's coming from, sooner we see it's actually, Ogondeji that saved the day and as usual he gets his glory from his people. In the present today, a man known as Goteja is on his way to the school of warriors where Ogondeji is training men to become just like him or better now, Gotija is from vegetarian age where they are known for speaking with the trees and understanding them as well and they are also great covers, he arrived at the school where they get welcomed by bullets that killed few of them then the rest of them are attack survivors, while listing them in, a warrior discovers a man who disobeys the order of putting away all weapons and belongings and after the fight with him they realize he's a spy without any option one of the three senior warriors have taken him down by himself. The training of the arrival has begun immediately and while they train they also learn to worship Ogondeji. The warriors are trained with weapons and admit champs because champs are very necessary tool in battle on the final day the Ogondeji welcomes them as warriors taking over from someone as long as you have the capacity to do so, it has become a norm the great advantage anyone can also get is when Ogondeji is in alliance with you. Later Alarika who stole the throne from his brother still reports him to Ogondeji about the possible threat made against him by his brother which he stole his kingship by the aid of Ogondeji meanwhile his one causing the havoc, Ogondeji sent his men to attack his brother and all on the battlefield, Botija fight bravely alongside the fellow basic warriors, meanwhile the three senior warriors see this kind of war as a degrading one so they stay in the forest and wait for the freshers to do the killing and it turns out the opposition is very strong that. Ogondeji's warriors begin to reduce and so he sends again a mass assassin to help. The soldiers out not because he cares for them but to approach his legacy, when they return home Ogondeji punishes the three senior soldiers by locking them up without food until he decides what to do with them, that night it's Ogondeji's daughter who was in charge of the food given to the warriors, she tells them they'll be eating at a very small portion that night but Gotija protests against it single-handedly and when she comes to inquire who questioned her order and comes out boldly. The next day Akitam punishes him but he still doesn't back down on his word even if he has to die, later they begin to treat him and she brings him oranges as a gift which gets him surprised, she also calls for him the next day and after praising his bravery, she tells him they should be friends. Meanwhile in another kingdom two farmers who are in business of trying to buy a woman's love goes to give her gifts it seems that she doesn't answer at them after all because she's already in. Love with someone who is learning to be a warrior in Ogondeji's camp and with no option the men took their gifts back home after she insults them. In Ogondeji's palace his wife is begging him to pity the senior warrior who's been locked up and while he's contemplating and finally yielding, he senses something at a prison a man is secretly giving the warriors food after he instructed no one should feed the prisoners. While the queen is still talking to him he notices it and appears in the prison where he orders the death of the good Samaritan and the release of the prisoner so with his command the man got burnt in the midst of everybody. The next morning, the villagers are gathered and terrified around the body, the body that had been returned home from Ogonjidi school. Kings and rulers of various kingdoms dare not to question Ogondeji rather they talk about the gifts they give to him, seeing his festival is coming up. Days later the lover whose man got burnt goes before her gods and commands they go and kill Ogondeji's wife as payback for killing her lover, going back to his kingdom his daughter has fallen in love with Gotija and her mom asked her to make sure her father doesn't see him around him but she pays the fear to it while in the palace the queen gets attacked by the deities and Gotija with his spell comes through and saves her, although she fought bravely on her own too. Alos in the kingdom Gogumi who is a very brave warrior is about to embark on a journey to wage war against his wife's village, she calls her sister to help her talk him out of it and he agrees not to go. The next morning, 
she comes to the palace to see Ogondeji where he sees Goteja and praises him for his bravery in saving the queen and promises to reward him with charms mean while the queen asks Ogondeji if he will not give Goteja any gifts, seeing that the young man really tried to save her life that day Ogondeji who doesn't like his glory being shared dismisses her. He also refuses to see Gogumi who came to apologize again for defying his orders. The next day the festival of Ogondeji takes place and during the event a game is played now this game is said to have won by one person Ogondeji and that no other person has ever won this game after him but that day Gotija does it and Ogondeji gets surprised. That night Akitan tells him how proud she is of him for doing what no one has done aside their father meanwhile Ogondeji remembers the counsel of his advisors to silence Gojita before everyone forgets about him, seeing that everyone has begun to sing the name of Gojita in praises the next day. Ogondeji decided to favor him by giving him a living chance and tells him he will have to accomplish three tasks before he gets promoted to a higher rank of warriors he tells him that the first task will be to fight to death with Gogumi hoping he will be killed by him cause Gogeta is no match for Gogumi because the man is a great warrior. Gogumi regrets that he will have to kill the young man who calls him father on that day but he not only kills Gogumi by using his three spells and everyone begins to mock Gogumi. After that Ogandeji announces the second task which is staying in coffin for seven days without food and if he survives he will be promoted and be respected by everyone. Three days later in the coffin Akiten became worried and her mom tells her it's necessary for him to finish the time before being promoted but we all know that it's not about the promotion she just don't care. The lover goes to check up on Gojita and he tells her that it's well and healthy in the coffin Ogandeji hears this and decides to add more hell to it by sinking him into the river. Later. That night more praises from the people and everyone gets surprised to see Gojita back alive and to see Ogondeji's daughter in love with him. The story continues against the last task asking him to wage war in a particular village. He goes the next day at the village and the people are having festival, although Gojita doesn't want to attack but the two warriors with him don't want to disobey Ogondeji so they attack together while the other two loses their life in the battle. While returning Ogondeji sends Ajemo the assassin fighter to attack him on his way, Gojita defeats her and realizes that Ajemo is Akitan is mask, she solemnly tells the lover that Ogondeji isn't her biological father and that she was only abducted from her attacked village after Ogondeji saw that she was a powerful child and so he saved her just to use her to kill innocent people. In the end after details she dies. He arrives the next day with Ajemo and everyone gathers around him he then makes a speech to call everyone to wake up from the slavery and tyranny of Ogondeji because he's been using them and making them dance to his tone he also speaks the secret to Akiten's mom that her husband hid her real child somewhere else after promising her he wouldn't have any other child as long as she sells her womb to make him a great warrior. Ogondeji appears and doesn't have any regrets from betraying her and so the battle breaks out he also told Gojita that it was him who attacked his village and killed his father, at this point warriors stood with Gojita and even though they fight Ogondeji his is full of strength and charm so they can't penetrate him, however his wife who knows the secret to his powers takes out the only dagger that could pass his charms and he goes down. Just then Gojita finishes him up with his dead father's charm. The kingdom is still in this way and there is no ruler to be feared that will keep the lower mother Suna Ogondeji's brother arrives and after being welcomed by the wise one he screams his brother's name Ogondeji and here the movie ends. Guys what's your take at this point as Gojita waged war against him own commander? Drop your opinion and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.